So, hi everybody, I'm Nate, I'm a data scientist at Synergize, and today I'm going to be presenting the Hector, the hierarchical object detector using multi-scale satellite imagery. Um, so first, some motivation. Um, I don't know about you, but when I first encountered some kind of satellite or aerial imagery, it was with Google Maps, like back in 2006 or something, when I was very young. And the first thing I wanted to do is see my house from it. And yeah, you saw the house, it was very nice. But then years later, I started working at the Earth Observation Company and I got introduced to Sentinel-2. But there you find out that, okay, Sentinel-2, you try to find your house, you can't really see your house because it's less than 10 meters by 10 meters and it doesn't even cover one Sentinel-2 pixel. Uh, so it means that detection of man-made objects from this medium resolution imagery is, is kind of not possible, so you require high resolution imagery which is um, very expensive and it does the detection over large areas is limited to kind of organization with a lot of resources or a lot of money. Um, but it turns out that the man-made objects, so buildings, roads and so on, are actually, if you look at the larger scale at the large AOI, they are actually very, very sparse and cover a very small percentage of an area of interest, especially if your area of interest is large, so maybe country level or even continental level. And this means that we can leverage the hierarchical approach. Um, so we, we have different levels of detection. We use the, the lowest one to do kind of rough, rough estimation and then, and then increase in accuracy as we go along and to minimize the amount of very high resolution imagery that we need. And for this, we do this so-called hierarchical divide and conquer approach. Um, so first we start with detection at medium resolution. So your medium resolution is your Sentinel-2 or maybe even Landsat. And in our use case, we used ESA, ESA Sentinel-2 imagery at uh, blue, and we used the 10 meter band, so blue, green, red, and near infrared. And the idea here is to use this imagery for approxim op approximate localization of of the built-up areas. So you want to know where the actual built-up areas are because just not ordering the very expensive high-resolution imagery over those areas can save you a lot of money. So here is an example of Azerbaijan uh, and you see that um, the detected built-up areas are in red and the other areas are basically areas where we do not expect any buildings to be or any man-made objects. But of course, for the, for the areas that do contain built-up, you still need to detect them somehow. As I said, Sentinel-2 is not really sufficient to accurately see the kind of the footprint of your house or the bounding, bounding box. And this means that we try to use Airbus imagery, so more high resolution. So in our case, we use Spot. And the idea here is to try to detect large and medium objects. Um, Okay, so here we have this covered, but especially kind of in developed countries and in some more urban regions, it is a problem because you have some very dense areas um, with small buildings, maybe townships and so on, uh, which are very hard to separate even on 1.5 meter resolution. And for that, you need something like maybe Pleiades symmetry uh, at half a meter resolution. And the idea here is to order Pleiades only on those areas where where kind of the previous level is not enough and, the, and to detect and ap accurately detect the small objects. So the final product would look something like this. So in, in green, you have the Pleiades imagery and in red, the detections on the Pleiades imagery and in red, the predictions on spot. And they are kind of combined together into a, into a map. Of course, I mean, doing detections and so on, we, we need some kind of model um, but uh, I think it's not the point of this talk to go into technical details about the model, but just to give you an idea. Uh, so we use a model that uh, detects oriented bounding boxes directly. So we are not doing segmentation or pixel based, but we, we, we are going more into the uh, object detection approach where you try to localize the object by finding the bounding boxes. And the, and the model uses the ResNet backbone and tries to use this feature pyramid network to be kind of scale invariant in a sense. Um, and another thing kind of in practical terms is that this model turns out that for each 
detection, it produces a lot of bounding boxes which are overlapping and with different amounts of pseudo probability. And that's why we need to apply non-max suppression to get, for example, for one, for each detection, only one building box. As far as training goes, um, of course, yeah, you have the model, you need to train it. Uh, we trained two models. One was for Sentinel-2 imagery, and uh, the other one was combined model for which we fed, to which we fed both Spot and Pleiades. And for Sentinel-2, it was quite easy. So we had images available across the whole country of Azerbaijan, and we also had building footprints, footprints available for the entire country. I mean, the ground truth data was not so accurate, but it was accurate enough to train this kind of model. And again, remember, the idea here is not to train kind of an, an accurate object uh, or a building class detector, but it's to find built up areas rather than single buildings. And for Spot and Pleiades, of course, like it was mentioned before, this imagery is quite expensive. Um, so we only had imaging data over small AOIs, and these images covered only, for example, nine square kilometers, which is just 0.01% of the country, country's area. And another thing with these kind of images is that they are very, they, are at, they have high spatial resolution, which means that all the problems in the reference data, so all the kind of geolocation inaccuracies, are even more prevalent. So what we did, we took some areas and we manually, manually validated buildings in those areas um, to get kind of a very, very clean reference data set which enabled us to train an accurate model. Um, and for these two, yeah, we trained a single, um, single state rotational detector. I guess the main kind of engineering part of, this, of our procedure is the inference. So it's, it takes a lot of engineering efforts to have, uh, have inference on a large scale, be, on a large area be scalable. So what we do is, let's say that you have an area of interest um, you first split it into kind of subgrid of, of li little chunks on which you then order Sentinel-2 imagery. So for each of these subchunks, you then apply the, the model, and this means that you get that you get the detections um, that you get the detections where the built-up areas are. After you have the after you have these uh, built-up areas recognized you order spot imagery for those, and again, apply the same procedure as before by applying the spot Pleiades model to get, again, detections on, on those areas. But here we come to a, a problem. So, okay, you, we ordered spot imagery across all the areas that we suspect are built up, but how do we know where to then order Pleiades imagery? So we, we sub-split those areas, again, uh, so there's a lot of reading in this proce procedure. So we subsplit those areas again, and we, for each of these subsplits, we calculate the so-called drill down index, which is a function of the number of buildings in those areas, in, this, uh, in that chunk, and the confidence of the model in its predictions. So the idea here is that if you have an area with a lot of small buildings, or a lot of buildings in general, and if the confidence of the model is poor, then there you need to kind of verify your predictions using Pleiades imagery. And again, once you, once you identify, identify those areas, you order Pleiades imagery, and on that imagery you run your model again, and then combine the predictions from the, and then you combine the predictions from the spot level and the Pleiades, Pleiades level into your final map. Of course, I mean, this is all nice and well if, if you're doing small areas, but again, here the idea is to scale. Um, and here we come a problem. So let's say that you have a, an area the size of Azerbaijan, as, as, was, dis as was discussed, and we sub subgrid it into, into, I don't know, 100 by 100 meter, or maybe a one kilometer by one kilometer, you still get a lot of chunks, and if each one takes 10, 15 seconds to process, um, this means that it will take a lot of, a lot of time. So here we leverage the capabilities of Ray, which is one of the open source libraries that we utilize in, in our team. And what Ray does is, first of all, it enables you to parallelize across co cores on a single machine. So let's say you have a, a server somewhere lying around or something like this. 
you can speed up your processing by running Gray, and it, it will take care that your kind of workflow is fully utilizing all the cores. But even this, you know, there's only so much you can do with a single machine. If you want to go kind of higher or want to utilize on a larger area, you need to do some cloud computing. And here, I, in our company, we use AWS. So what you can do, you can use Ray again, so you need to set up kind of a cluster configuration and set up a Docker image, but when that is done, the only thing you need to do is parallelize, you is run Ray um, with your configuration, and it, it will parallelize your computation across cheap AWS EC2 instances. Um, I know this sounds expensive, but in reality, it's not, it's not really. So for Azerbaijan, um, the processing was in the order of tens or hundreds of euros. So it's not really that much, uh, that much cost and it's affordable by smaller companies or even, I mean, if need be, individuals. Of course, once you have your, your data, uh, I mean, your predictions, uh, we wanted to validate them to see if they are any good and if <laughs> what, what we produced actually makes sense. So we, we kind of validated those in, in two different steps. So we did validation on the Sentinel-2 imagery. Um, and what we found out is that the built-up areas are quite nicely detected, even for the few isolated buildings. So the main kind of question that we had was, okay, let's say that you have a single building somewhere, um, or maybe a, a small village with two, three houses. We'll be still able to, to get these areas um, using this Sentinel-2 approach. And it turns out, yes, that we can. So the calculation that we made was that we retain around 40% of the entire area of interest. Um, so 60% can be completely discarded, so it doesn't need to be processed anymore. And with this, we only lose 0.6% of buildings. And one of the kind of natural questions that one asks is, okay, um, why even use Sentinel-2? Why don't you just use something like OpenStreetMap? And it turns out that, especially in the developed countries, so for example, like this, Azerbaijan, or maybe in Africa, um, OpenStreetMap is not really accurate or really not up to date. So for example, in this use case of Azerbaijan, using OpenStreetMap, uh, we would lose 3% of the buildings, so much more. Than, uh, than just using Sentinel-2 imagery. Of course, we also then validated the spot and Pleiades predictions, and kind of the main takeaways was that uh, we wanted to see if what we did makes sense, and yeah, the conclusions are that it does. So Pleiades is much better at detecting smaller buildings, as expected and as wanted, because the spatial resolution is high. Um, but another one, and here on the graph, we see that, for example, the pseudo-probability distribution for Pleiades um, is kind of much higher, so the model is more confident because, again, it gets a higher spatial resolution. Um, but one problem that we faced uh, when we looked at the imagery is the false positive detections. So this is kind of a caveat because we had limited imagery for spot and play others, and this limited imagery was kind of focused more on built-up areas. Uh, and so that means that the model didn't see a lot of uh, other areas where there are no buildings. So this means that we had some problems with the false positive detections, um, yeah, both for the built-up areas and the non-built-up areas. Like I said, of course, there is no free lunch, so this approach uh, does lead to some, um, some loss in, in accuracy. So it can't be free, but maybe we can make it a bit cheaper uh, with this similar quality of ingredients. So here we have a nice table comparison uh, between kind of the accuracy, so the accuracy here is the mean average precision score, and the, and the cost saving over using just play others. So let's say that you wanted to just use play others. Uh, what would be your cost and uh, what would be your accuracy? So first we look at the first one, we see that the accuracy is for just using play others, the mean average precision is 0 0.45, but let's say that we just use the first level of Hector, so Sentinel-2 to get the built-up areas and then order play others over those, we already get a saving of approximately 2.5 uh, times uh, with negligible loss in accuracy, I think. So there's not much of a difference. Um, similarly, um, if we just use, um, if we just use spot, okay, it's much cheaper than play others, 
but there is a loss in uh, there is a loss in mean average precision. But again, then with Hector, so with all three levels and with some threshold that we we found out and we saw that this kind of works nicest. You see that uh, the accuracy is somewhere between what you get from Pleiades and what you get just using spot, but the cost saving is a lot. So you save 20 times the, the amount of money, basically. And we feel like, um, yeah, this is a nice result for most use cases. Of course, if you require very accurate precision and you have unlimited amounts of money, then you might consider just using Pleiades, but for most companies, I think, using this hierarchical approach makes a lot of sense. Uh, of course, these are, these are scores that we calculated on our validate, manually validated areas. So it's, yeah, uh, if you use a different area or maybe something like this, then maybe it's not completely accurate, but the rough idea should be the same. After we had this model tuned, uh, kind of built for Azerbaijan, uh, we also tried to do some kind of transfer learning and fine tune this model in Dakar to see how well it transfers to a different, to a completely different geographical region. Uh, and we used, first of all, we used Sentinel-2 model without fine tuning. So we didn't, because we had basically no training data for Dakar. Um, we just tried to run, we just tried to run the Sentinel-2 model as is. And you can see here on the graph that, yeah, you do lose, the model is much less confident. Um, but overall, the quality seemed to be quite okay. And what we also tried is to fine tune the spot Pleiades model. Again, I said that we had no reference data, but we, what we did, we, or not to the quality that we wanted, um, but we manually labeled a data set of 7,000 buildings and trained the model on that. And it turns out that this leads actually to quite good results. So we compare these results to, to open buildings, so from Google, and which, which provides buildings basically across whole Africa. And the uh, results are, I think, comparable, if not even favorable for Hector. So I'm here talking about what we did. So the question here in the audience is how can I use it? So, and what, what we made publicly available. So Hector is fully open source. So we've published the models and labels for the car, and they are published on this on this open AWS S3 bucket uh, that you can freely access. Uh, we've also pub published the full Hector code uh, on our GitHub, uh, so Sentinel Hub Hector uh, under the MIT license, and we've also published kind of an example notebook, so kind of to get you started, uh, that does inference. Uh, only, so no training, but just inference. But for a lot of the use cases, maybe this could be enough for somebody to try out what, what Hector is about. Um, yeah, just something about the, the code base. So the code base allows you to reproduce the training and the inference steps uh, in total. Um, but there are, of course, some prerequisites, um, which unfortunately un are unavoidable. So you do need a Sentinel Hub account uh, because we do we do work with Sentinel Hub, and you need you do need some credits for very high set resolution imagery. Um, but again, yeah, it depends on your area of interest how much you need. And uh, our code base is kind of tailored to, to be used with AWS. So you need an S3 bucket for the storage of the data and for the EC2 spot instances. Um, I think this about covers my presentation. Um, so. I think, um, so if you have any questions, please let me know, and I would be happy to answer. All right, thank you, Nitz.